So, for the past few weeks, I've been watching a show called The Practice, starring uh, Steve Harris, Kelly Williams, Cameron Manheim, Jay Badaluco, Jessica Capshaw, and others. Oh, and Dylan McDermott. No offense, it's just that he's like the main character of the show, and if you start off with him, then it's like, nah, I kind of didn't want to just do that. No offense, Dylan. Um... But, like, the thing was, was that, like, I saw this show because I've been on a Law Show kick. You know, ever since I was watching Law & Order at SVU, and uh, I found myself wanting to see Homicide Life on the Street, and I couldn't do that because it was, like, it's, I don't know where to find it at. But as time went by, I said to myself, what other aspects of law are there? Because it can't just be just all cops, right? So... I just, I, you know, it said, hey, because you watch Loner SVU, try this show, The Practice. I'm like, why not? Um, so, the thing about The Practice is that, like, uh, it really actually got me, it, it, it actually educated me a little bit. It kind of got me an idea of what lawyers kind of go through a little bit. Like, if I were to watch another law show that probably has nothing to do with lawyers, if a lawyer showed up, I would have an idea why that lawyer is there and what that lawyer is doing. So uh, I also kind of, like, I learned a little bit in there. I, lo- I now know what ex parte means. I know what it means when a, when a judge says chambers. I know, you know, kind of like, you know, I know that there's a lot of Latin in law now. Blah, 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 blah. And um, there's a lot that goes into it. Also, the show was like in 1997, so... Part of me, like in 1997, I had to have been about like a good eight or nine years old. So, you know, like I probably would have never wanted to watch this show back then because I was a, I was a child. You know, I would rather watch shows about, you know, animation and, you know, cool flashing lights and chase scenes, I guess. Scooby-Doo was actually a really cool show, but I just, I don't know. It was cool, but it was one dimensional. I think I outgrew that show really quickly. But I did know that as a kid, I liked cartoons. So watching this show now kind of really did sort of just kind of like introduce an aspect of um, dialogue over um, what's being seen. Like I could probably like I could probably watch this show blindfolded and sort of you know get an idea of what's going on. I probably wouldn't know what any of the characters look like. But I would know and have an understanding as to what's going on. I would think that it's kind of like one of those things, you know, it's very dialogue heavy. I'll say that. But, you know, aside from the learning process, the actual story, the knowing of everything that's going on, I guess part of me just couldn't really, I couldn't connect. Because you could sort of tell that whoever wrote this show was rich and maybe entitled or maybe rich and just really had like weird fantasies about just being this big shot because I think the thing that really kind of bugged me the most about um, this show was um, Bobby Donnell, Dylan McDermott's character, was apparently this ridiculously irresistible dude. He was written to be this guy that every woman just wanted to be with. I mean, you know, Helen Gamble, Lindsay Dole, uh, one of the judges, um, I want to say a witness, if not a client, um, you know, ultimately he marries Lindsay and then he gets in an affair with a girl that he used to know back then who he also dated. It's like this dude just went through, dude had a high, like had a really high body count in comparison to like mostly everybody else. And I think the thing that really kind of annoyed me about that was that, like, it was all, like, it was, it seemed like, in one instance, a judge, um, you know, had problems with the case because she had a sex dream about him. It's weird, you know, like, (sighs) I mean, like, you know, it was just that sort of thing made me, reminded me why I hate fictional romances, because, like, it feels like, like, I'm going to steer off a little bit because I don't, like, because uh, this is a problem that I have with a lot of fiction. Um, it, back in those days, anyway, in the 90s, there used to be this thing called playing hard to get, which, as a kid, I actually sort of believed was a real thing for a moment until I started to learn that no means no. 
I was a kid, I had a crush on this girl, and like you know, I was watching. I watched a lot of television, and they would always say, "Playing hard to get, eh?" You know, and I would assume that that was a real thing until so one girl ultimately told me, "I'm not playing hard to get. I just don't like you." And that just made me realize, is this a real thing? But that was something that they really pushed back in those back in the day, like in fiction. That I just thought was just really kind of like looking back at it is really stupid now. And that's just one of the few things. One of the things I noticed about like a lot of media back then was that like it was written through the perspective of a certain type of person. Um, I would say rich, elderly, um, sort of like like when it comes to dating and romance these guys sort of just have these fantasies that these women just want them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, every woman wants you. All you have to do is make the first move. And if they don't like you, they're playing hard to get. And, you know, if they're not playing hard to get, then they're going to ultimately fall in love with you later. Yes, they will. And that was just kind of the agenda that was being pushed back in those days. And um, it, it's really weird because, like, like watching the practice, it really kind of just sort of put that into perspective. Did he was he did he also with Rebecca too? I don't know. I hope not, but it's heavily implied. But yeah, like watching that, you know, it was just like and then, you know, enter Alan Shore, played by James Spader, and he's kinda got the same thing going with him, you know. All of a sudden, you know, like women just find him ridiculously attractive. At some point, a lady says, you know, initially, you know, that he repels her, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they, they couldn't be, they couldn't fall in love with each other if they tried, but throughout the entire eighth season, it's like, oh, well, now I like him. It's like, no, I don't know, because, I mean, to put this in perspective, he just kept pushing after she said no. He kept going, and all of a sudden, she just sort of broke down and said, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know if they consummated or not, but I'm pretty sure they did because writers, bro. And that's another thing, too, the wear her down aspect. I just think that that's really weird as well. Like, you know, all in the 90s, there was always this concept of if a girl tells you no, it actually means maybe and keep going, keep pursuing. Steve Urkel, um, Screech, that... Um, that dude in, um, I forgot his name, I forgot his name, that dude uh, in Sister Sister, uh, Roger, Roger, it was always a character that like, you know, it, it was always a character that a girl just happened, that it was usually a male character who liked the girl, and the girl would always say no, and he would just keep trying, and somewhere along the way, she would just get worn down and realize, you know what, maybe I should just give him a chance. And that was the sort of thing that was being pushed back then. It's like nowadays, that would just be creepy. But back then, it was just something to do. It's weird because that was... <laughs> it's weird because like looking back at it, it's so cringy. It's so bad. And um, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe just part of me just sort of saw this stuff and just don't really accept it now. But it's just like that stuff like that really just sort of diluted my ideas towards romance and dating in those times because when I was a kid I thought this was the thing to do except when I tried it I got rejected remorselessly multiple times I mean all the time I think the thing that really kind of hurt me the most about getting rejected was that like I would see other guys you know get the girl that they want employing some of these same tactics and it took me a long time to realize that looks was a factor and you know, you shave my mustache and my beard and you make my head a little less round. I looked almost heavily similar to how I look now. So if you think this is ugly, then you probably might have thought young me was ugly too. But that was the thing, man. You know, like, um, and I, I feel like, you know, TV kind of ultimately sort of skewered my ideas towards romance and dating and, and sex and things like that because they really made it seem like if you wanted to, um, if you wanted that girl, you could get that girl because that girl clearly wants you back. And that's rarely the case. And, um, 
I don't know. I guess part of me just really had a hard time understanding that back then. But now, now I totally get it. So like, you know, you, you will never see me like go after a girl and be like, you know, Hey little lady, come over here for a little bit. Let me talk to you for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, that's not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, like television was weird back then. And it also feels like it sort of pushes this agenda that like, you know, women won't say no. You, you just have to keep pursuing. Like you, you have to date, you have to pursue. And women will somehow just not say no. That was an agenda that was being pushed back then. And I feel like that agenda has kind of been pushed so much that people have started to accept it. And now I'm just like, I am so over it. Like watching a lot of the, like watching a lot of 90s shows now just really kind of made me realize that this sort of thing was just not great. And uh like watching the practice just sort of like put it all in the forefront for me because now I actually had to pay attention to what they were saying and what they were doing and yeah it's cringy good show though good show I didn't mean to steal off but that's it love peace y'all have a good one be safe out there and uh I might do the L word next <laughs>